Now, I'm going to do Scott is going to do our demonstration for us tonight. Scott's going to lead off by showing you something he did earlier today that might necessarily be really related to his demonstration, but is related to something Sue just talked about, and that's safety. But before we start, I want to mute the entire audience, the, everybody on here, 80 something folks right now, um, and then Scott will unmute himself to talk. We do that because of sometimes the background sounds, you don't realize they come on, um, come through and interrupt the, the demonstration. Another thing is this is Scott's demonstration. Please let him continue unless you see something dangerous, hazardous, or really out of this world, goofy, stupid, whatever. Um, but in, if you got questions, if you would hold them to the end, he might answer them before you even get there. So let's go right now live and direct to Scott to get our demonstration for this evening. Scott, you're up on deck, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. My internet's not so great tonight, so hopefully you don't lose me. So here's what Eddie was talking about, if I can get it in the camera. There's my face shield from earlier today. So it's got a pretty nasty crack in it. So that was from a piece of this material, something like this, that it decided it was going to explode in the middle. It split literally in half. So it was a pen yeah. blank that broke? Pen blank that broke, yep. Oh my. And because I don't use a mandrel, everything came flying, including the tube. Mm. So, and Sue, if you can see that, let's see, I'll pull it out a little bit. If you can see that, go to the doctor. I cut my thumb off on a table saw 40 years ago. So it, it, it pays to go to the doctor. So we're gonna start out with a pen demo today, um, turning some some resin, some of the guys wanted to see, uh, I'm gonna turn this back to my drill press. Wanted to see how to use negative rake cutters. So I use a lot of them to turn pens. Actually, I use negative rake a lot. And Dane asked if I would do a demo on negative rake cutters. So that's what we're gonna work on tonight. Um, I'm just gonna show you a few tricks that I've learned making hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of pens. I used to do pens as production. So in my drill press here, I have a set of V-jaws for drill and pen blanks. They're magnetic, they clamp on, you can adjust them around. And what I like about them, no matter, I was drilling odd sizes today. I can slide this in here, hold it from the bottom with my finger. Put it in the V block and it's centered. It's automatically centered because I'm using those V blocks. Those V blocks will put any square or not square piece in the center because the V blocks take up the, the slack for drilling that hole. You don't, very rarely do I ever move this vise to uh, center these parts no matter what size they are. They'll pretty much always come out in the center. Unless you go to something really big like these, these may not, but they're way oversized. This is a standard, standard one inch blank. This is an inch and a quarter blank. This one might not come out in the center. And as you can see, it doesn't fit in my system very well. So I'd have to move my jig because it's hitting the base of this machine. So there's any questions with how to make these V blocks? Does everybody know how to make those? What kind of material are you using? This is just HTP plastic. Okay. So what I do is I cut, if I can get it to focus, I cut a slot in the middle first, the depth that I want. 
I tilt the table saw blade to 45 degrees and make two passes. This starts out as one piece like this. And then I cut it in half to get my two sides. Because then there, the V blocks are identical to one another. I can flip them over, do whatever I want to them, and they'll always be centered on themselves. Like so. Because you cut the V at the same time. That, that And that's provided your rip fence and your table saw cut straight, but hopefully you have that adjusted correctly. Does everybody understand how that works? Sounds good to me. So, so here's here's one pen that I'm going to show you how to make later. For all the veterans out there, they might like a neat pen like this. This is a 308, actual 308 cartridge that's been drilled and has a seven millimeter pen tube put in it. Hmm. And a standard seven millimeter transmission. And I just turn the wood end to match the shell casing. Mm -hmm. so we'll do one of those towards the end. I'll move the camera and I'll start turning a piece of resin. Once I get it set up here, bear with me. With your face shield on, right? With my <laughs> junky face shield on, the one I don't like. So everybody can see that, right? Yes, you look good. good. Now, Scott, the one that broke, is that made by Uvex called the Bionic? Yes, it is. It's the Bionic. Yeah, and folks, if you're not aware of them, they're probably one of the best face shields that you and I can get. Right there is um, what's And it's comfortable to wear. Yep. So I, I ordered new shields for it today. They're $9.99 on Amazon. This is a UVAC shield too, but it's a cheap one. It's just a, doesn't have the bottom on it, the chin guard, which is what I don't like about it. What is that cord behind you dragging, running across the floor behind you? This, this here? Yeah, it looks like you're about to trip over it a minute ago. That's plugging my modem in so we have Wi Fi. Hmm. Oh. Don't trip over it. This, I won't, it's sitting on the floor actually. I bumped it, but it's sitting on the floor. So with the headset I have on, this old face shield isn't gonna fit. So I'm gonna make sure I stand off to the side when I do this. I'll wear some safety glasses. Now, speed is your friend when you're turning acrylics. The faster you can turn it, or the comfortable you can turn, speed you can turn at is the best, okay? I turn at 1850. If you're not comfortable at that speed, go slower. I also wear a glove because I'm allergic to the resin. My hands break out from the resin. Normally, I wouldn't wear a glove. But it's a tight-fitting glove. It's a mechanics glove. So it's tight to my fingers. And I only use it on the hand that's up against the tool rest. So um, I... I turn between centers. Guess I should talk about that first. I don't use a mandrel. I do like Dane does, sorta. This is just a drive point. It's a dead center. It's just a Morris taper that fits into my headstock. Live center on this end. And I just take the standard bear bushings and put it in the pen tube. I glue my tubes in ahead of time. That's what I do. So that's how the pen tubes start. I square them off. Some guys don't do that. I like to do it ahead of time. It's just preference. So when I, when I put this in here, I crank this up and I listen to the machine and you guys probably won't be able to hear it because it'll cancel out. But I listen for a particular sound, and that tells me when it's tight. Hmm. One thing about turning resin between centers, the nice part about doing this versus a mandrel, 
If you get a catch, it stops. It doesn't chip out quite as bad as what it would be if you didn't turn between, if you turned on a mandrel. So it's, it's make, it forces you to take light cuts. So here we go. My tool's on center and I cut just a little up or a little down depending on the material I'm cutting. This piece is a piece of alumolite. It's very chippy and it's hard. It doesn't turn as nice as polyester resin. Please note those are camera flashes. He's not got a piece that's gone back and forth, okay? <laughs> Can you, can you see that or does the camera need to be over the top? Oh, of no, no, that, no, it's working fine, Scott. Just the, uh, the harmonics of the wood material and the camera are sometimes counteracting each other. Okay, there. now you can see my tool rest a little better to see what I'm doing with the tool. See if this yeah. light washes, that washes it out a little. See how that works for you. I'm watching you on a TV screen in my shop, so I can see this on a big screen while I'm doing this. Yeah. It's off to my left, just for people who want to try to do demos. It's kind of nice. Yeah, that's why I had other, it up last week, but mine went dead. So, so one of the things I do is I hardwire right to my TV. I run an HDMI cable from my laptop to my TV. So that works out good. Um, one other thing I want to talk about turning resin, especially polyester resin, heat is your enemy. Don't get, don't go crazy. Take, take your time. The hotter that pen blank gets, the worse it cuts. You should get nice soft ribbons like this. They shouldn't be frozen or hard frozen hard when you get get to them okay but I'm cutting a little bit with the corner if you can hear me not cutting so much with the center of the tool. So now when I get fluff on here like this, I just take a acid brush and it takes it right off. So you don't have to shut the lathe off every time you wanna clean that off. The old toothbrush works well for that too. Yes, toothbrush would work great too. Billy, is that what you did to my toothbrush? <laughs> Guilty. So you can see why everybody hates turning resin. It's a mess. Yes. But it finishes so nice. Yes, it does. So I don't use any CA finish on mine. I just polish them. So I'm going to do a Rachel Ray here in a few minutes. I'll switch to one that I already got ready to be polished. Yeah, no finish. I'll get this needed. one down. Get this one down a little farther. Is that a negative rate scraper that you're using on there? Yes, it is. This one's a square. It's a square one. <laughs> So I'll show you that I do use the round one on occasion, but I prefer the square one for roughing part of it. I'll use the round one when I get to doing the ends here, these ends. Thank you. One of the things I like about doing it with a life with a dead center instead of a mandrel. I cut better to my right because I'm right handed. I cut better going this way. 
this way towards the tail stack and I do go on towards the head stack. So sometimes I'll take this plank and flip it around to do the, do the last pass. Do I take this down just about to the mandrel? I will shut this off, let it stop spinning. I take my fingernail and I test this with my fingernail. And you always have an extra mandrel. I don't know if you guys can see that but I hit this one on this end. This one, I hit it. It's now junk. Oh, you mean the bushing? I hit the bushing, yep. Sorry, I said mandrel, I meant bushing. So I hit the bushing and I undercut it by a few thousands. You can see that. Yeah. So that one's now goes in my scrap bin and it'll get made into something else. <laughs> Luckily, I have extra ones. Carbide will cut these bushings, as you can see. Only in a demo. <clears throat> well, they do use carbide for machining steel, so. Yep. And this is soft steel, whatever this is. I'm not sure what they make those bushings out of, but. It's pretty soft because I because I've made made them into different sizes for doing different things. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to use my round cutter. This is also negative rake. Oh, focus, nice. So yeah. now I'm going to do my ends, and I actually start almost on the bushing, and I just get those ends. The nice part about using the round here, you don't tend to hit the bushing. You can come from the bushing side and not hit the bushing. Now that's close enough, close enough for me. I'll do the rest of it with a piece of 220 sandpaper. And I just take, I'll just do a quick, show you how I quick sand it. So I round mine so they don't feel sharp. If your mandrels are, or your bushings are a little off. Dane talked about how they don't look right or don't feel right. So I take and round mine just a little bit with a piece of sandpaper. You can round that over to that bushing and then it'll, it'll feel smooth in your hand. You won't notice it as much if it's not quite the right size. If you, if you buy generic Gatsby pen kits, this is a Sierra pen kit. You buy Gatsby pen kits, I guarantee you the bushings aren't going to fit every time you order a set of pens. They don't, for whatever reason, their manufacturing process isn't very good, not very consistent. So I just take a piece of sandpaper on the bottom and I'll just round that over till I start seeing I'm kissing the bushing. I don't know if you can see that on the, I'll do it on the other end for you. Now I'm going to stick my hand underneath the backside. Try not to hit my switch. And I just bring that back and round it down to the bushing. That takes away the sharp edge if it's not exactly perfect to your pen kit. And then I might just take a little quick sand like that. You know, sanding boring. So I'll just kind of show you my process. That's about all the sanding I do with the 220. Then I'll come back with two and take my scratches and run them vertical along with the grain, just like running grain on a piece of wood. And I'll take that all the way to 600. I'm not gonna bore you with that because I got something that are already to that point. 
to 600. So if you notice this pen blank, you can put some teenager alcohol on there. Don't use acetone to clean your epoxy pen blanks because it eats the spin, it eats the epoxy. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so you can see that that pen blank looks semi-translucent. Yeah. That pen, that pen blank has, so you don't see the tube in it. I put a black chrome tube in it. Huh. So that makes the color stand out. So you got to, you got to watch what you put in for pen tubes. If I put a brass one in there, you'd be able to see the brass. It would, it would shine through as brass. This pen tube has a blue tube in it. You can't buy blue tubes, so you have to make them yourself. So I take a can of Rust-Oleum, high gloss, whatever color you need, and paint the tube, and I bake it in the oven at 250 degrees for 20 minutes. I have a rack that I can pop it in an oven. If you have a toaster oven, you could do it in a toaster oven. It just hardens the finish so that when you go to glue it up, it doesn't slime the finish off. Because if you use CA glue, it will loosen the paint and make a mess. So typically when I paint tubes, I use epoxy. Okay. That one has a blue tube in it. So I'm cheap. If I can make my own colors, I make my own colors. So there's a blue tube. This one actually has metallic in it, so it'll actually make a, a blank kind of have a glitter effect to it on the inside. Nice. I, I'm cheaper yet. I just I, I use sharpies to color my tubes. <laughs> <laughs> works great, and, and that works, and that works too. That's a great suggestion, Billy. Um, I do that with yellow because I can't find fluorescent yellow that matches fluorescent yellow in any of the pen blanks. So this is white acrylic paint, enamel paint from, from uh, Rust-Oleum. And I'm sure you could use other brands. I just use Rust-Oleum because that's what I'm used to using. <laughs> so that's a white one. So you, so you got to pay attention to what your, what your blanks look like when you start. Some of them are translucent. Some of them you can change the color. This is one we're gonna work on tonight. This one's green and white. I could have put a green tube in it because the green Back it is- Back up just a bit. There we go. How's that? Try not yeah. to shake. That's better. Okay, that, that one I put a white tube in, but I could have put a green tube in it if I could have found a color green that would have accented the green. But there was more when I looked at the blank, it had more pearl white in it than it had green, so I decided to use a white tube. And and that'll change the color of the pen kits. I, I made a pen not too long for, ago for a lady, and she broke it and wanted another one just like it. Well, I had the other half, and I forgot what color tube I put in it. So I was testing tubes until I figured out which one it was. And that it, blank and it, reminds it, me of a winter green candy. And that's what it's actually called is winter green candy. <laughs> good, good guess, Billy. Are you, are you looking in the window of my shop or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too cold up there for me. What kind of glitter? Hey, are you using the glitter I, I, had, I had 50 degrees today. And when I stepped out a minute ago before we switched to me, it was raining. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to get three to five inches of snow tonight. Oh no. So, so this is this is alumalite, aluminolite blank. This is a polyester resin blank. There you can see the difference in how they look. They're both sanded to 600, but you can see the difference in how they how they shine. It, this one looks more waxy. So I'm going to take these two and I'm going to finish these two, the red one and the green one for you. 
and show you how I do it. And then I'll make a wooden one for you to show you how I put CA finish on, which is different than most of you guys. Because I don't use Parfex. Safety do Sue does. Safety Sue does. <laughs> and, and I've actually used... For um, everything, you guys. I, I've used... I've used tight bond to glue my fingers back together too. It works. <laughs> so Scott, there was a question earlier. Um, they were asking what you use to glue your brass in to the blank swift. Okay, if I if they're non-painted, I use Medium CA glue. I use, if I can get it so it focus, so the cameras will focus on tight it. Bond medium. This is tight bond Pull medium. There we go. Yeah, it's the angle of my camera here. How about if I drop it down here? There we go. <laughs> so it's tight bond medium. I use that to glue my acrylic blanks. My wood blanks, I use tight, tight bond thin first, and I coat the inside of the blank. I pour it in so it runs out the other end, swirl it around, give it a few seconds, let it flash, and then I'll put medium CA on the tube and push that in there and just let it dry on its own. Now, Joaquin was talking earlier about having a pen tube stick on him. The reason it does that is the oil in the wood. So if you're using a real oily wood, use thick CA instead of medium, and it won't do that. The medium CA glue and the oils in the wood will cause it to freeze up before you get that pen tube in there all the way. Okay? So you got to kind of know what kind of wood you're using. If you're using bloodwood, paduk, Osage orange, teak, rosewoods, uh, rosewoods, yep, rosewoods. All those real exotic ones that are real oily and shine real nice without using CA glue. When you put C use CA glue to glue the tubes in, they're gonna they're gonna freeze up on you before you get them in if you use medium or thin. So use thick, glue them up the night, drill them, glue them up the night before before you want to turn them so they got all night to for that ca to set all the way through it'll bond it'll bond in a few minutes where you could lightly turn it maybe but if you want to make sure that it's not breaking that bond on that tube let it sit overnight i let all my acrylic tubes sit overnight it's just just something i do there's no rhyme or reason i guess you can do it however you wish but i find it's better if you leave them sit overnight I let my epoxy, if I use five minute epoxy, I do the same thing. So if you're gluing um, like this one, because I used blue paint on it and I didn't want it to smear, I used epoxy. And don't use one minute epoxy because you'll crack your blanks. The heat of the epoxy flashing will crack these blanks. Mm. So you want to use five minute or longer epoxy. Don't. Like I say, do them the night before so you don't worry about them cracking. I've had them already crack, and I think that's why that one exploded. I didn't, it wasn't, I, I had a thermal reaction. It was a pa painted pen tube. It was actually the other half of this blank. And I think what happened is it had a thermal crack in it that I didn't, couldn't see. It was on inside. When I got just about to the end, it exploded. Scared the living you know what out of me. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at the very end because you don't have a lot of pressure on them at the very end. So I'm going to take a pan of water. I'm going to make a pan of water for myself. And I use micro mesh to do my final sanding. And then I use car polish at the very end to give it its ultimate shine and if i can set this here so i don't spill it and because i have a terrible memory 
I was telling Dane the other day, I have a memory like a steel trap. Everything gets in, nothing gets out. So I keep my card here with the colors and the grits. And I start at 1,500 and I'll end at 12,000. Maybe it's better down there. So I keep that close to my lathe so I can see what color I'm on. And I ha usually have them all nice and neatly stacked in a little tray. What colors go in what order. So all I have to do is reach down and grab and throw the other one in the, in the bin. Give me a second, I'm gonna sort these quick. So we're not wasting any time. Purple, blue, and my final one will be gray. I stack these down on one side of a little pan in the order that they go. See if I can get that there. In the order that they go. And I just set them on my bedways and we'll have at her. This doesn't take very long. You don't have to work at this. How many what, other guys do it this way? What does it mean to speed when you're sanding? I, I don't uh, ever change speeds. I, I have. Gets done at 1850. When I'm making pens, I'm. Am I still there? Yeah, yeah we got, got you. Yes. You, you roboted yeah. a little bit, but you're all right. All right. So I'm going to start out with 1500. I soaked it in my pan of water. Make sure I got plenty of water on here. Because this is already at 600, there shouldn't be hardly any scratches in it. And I just go around it a few times. You can see that it's taking some off. That's all you got to do. I rinse my 1500 off, throw it back in the pan. I wipe that back down with some paper towel. And I'll go to the next one, which is 1800. And as you get up in the grits, you don't see as much on the on the on the paper itself or on the micro mesh. Micro mesh can be washed in Dawn soap and water too, so you don't ruin them. And I cut the pads into one inch strips so that you don't need that whole pad that they come in. So the next one is 2400. You gotta keep it moving because you can burn the, burn the micro mesh and then it sticks to your resin and then you gotta really got a mess. If you can get it off. Ask me how I know. So now you can see I'm not getting much on the pad anymore. I'll give it one more wipe. And now I'm just going to go fast through the grits. This will be 3,200. It goes up in about, until you get to 6,000, it goes up in 400 gram increments or 400 grit increments. And I try to stay off the metal as best I can. Usually let my finger rub on the metal and then I know that I'm on the metal. So you can see that there's nothing on that one either. You can see the shine coming up already just in the ones I've done. And there's nothing on that one at all. It's it's purely polishing now.
you don't have to spend a lot of time at this if you don't if you're good with the tool you know have your good cuts with the tool and you get it sanded to 600 there's not much time in the micro meshes you should be able to do this pretty fast now i'm doing i'm up to 8000 already i got one step after this one for the micro meshes and then i got my my next little trick that i do LED lights work nice. It helps you see the scratches. You probably can't see them on the camera because it kind of glares it out, but I can see them on this end. So that was 12,000. I'm gonna shut it off so I don't put any scratches in with the paper towel. And you can see the shine that's on there already. Let me turn this light off. Maybe it'll be, you can see the shine that's in that already. You can leave it there if you want. I do one more step. Let me see if I can get this to focus on this bottle. So this is McGuire's car polish 105. And, and it's a very fine Super fine car polish. Shake the bottle up. Now he's going to pop. Go ahead, Eddie. Look at that reflection. He's going to polish that. Yeah, you could leave it at that if you wanted to, but I like to polish it. I can read the name on the end of the light bulb. <laughs> So a little bit of this car polish goes a super long ways. And I take my bounty paper towel, which is the best polishing paper towel I've ever found. And I fold it into, I started out as a full size sheet and I got it folded into quite a few. I've made a buffing pad now. That's about all you need on the, on the, for doing the pen. I'll put it on by hand. Dulls it up. I turn the lathe back on. In the same spot that the compound is on the paper. Now I'm just going to pull, put pressure on the paper, and you'll see the shine come up on the. If I can get my hands out of the way, you're going to see the shine come up on that without even. Doing any more. If you get it on the on the bushings, it'll put black spots on there. If you got a white pen, be careful. Sometimes it'll ingrain it in your pen. If you get too much heat in it, it'll suck that up in there. There you go. Can't ask for much more of a shine than that. I don't know how good you can see that, but it's really shiny. Hmm? So now, Great shot. because this pen's going to go into a shop when I'm done, I have a lady that sells my pens, and people like to touch them. You know, they all got to pick them up and look at them, you know. You take a little bit of carnauba wax. It's just carnauba, carnauba polish wax. It has no cleaning agents in it. It's just a clear wax made for woodworking. Um, I can't even tell you where I bought it. And it's so warm in my shop, it's actually liquefying. You moved your camera. Okay, all I'm doing is rubbing it on. I'm going to rub it on. Let it sit for a couple seconds. Turn my lathe on. Man. Let's 
and buffered off. That's that's what I do to them if they if they're going into a shop and somebody's going to play with them. If I'm sell, selling them direct to a customer and they're not going to get played with too much, I don't always put the wax on. I just put the wax on and it just kind of protects them from oils on your hands because they will, some pens will darken over time from the oils in your skin because there's no, really no finish on it. It's just a piece of plastic, essentially. Any questions while I'm messing around here? God, what uh, towel do you use? Any. What was that? What oh, towel? That's the question you again. Say you used. I use bounty. bounty. Bounty paper towel. It, it. I don't know how they make it, but it really works great as a buffer. I have some friends that work in the automotive industry. They actually put it on their buffing wheels and use it on their buffers on a car in the early stages of buffing paint because it, it cuts. It's got, the way the fibers are made, it actually cuts. I, I like it. I use tons of it. I should buy stock. <laughs> My I wife says, I should. what was that? I think it's the similarity of the name, how it's spelled. Scott, you're frozen. Oh, yeah, it's, it's my internet is cutting in and out. It's probably the storm that's going by. Oh, yeah. Hey, Scott, I did the same thing with uh, micro mesh. Yep. I, I numbered with, uh, with, with a, uh, you know, one of those non, non sharpies. Yeah. I numbered one through nine. So I don't have to look at the little chart all the time. I go one, two, three. So yeah. Well, I, ha I have mine on a little magnet. So it just sticks on the headstock of my lathe and I just look over and look at the color. Yeah, okay. But I, but I when I'm I turning a lot of pens, I, I have it memorized too. So I don't even have to look at it anymore. No, that's good. I, uh, and I have mine stacked too, as I'm, uh, in order so that I can just grab the next the next one. So here it is with a with an end on it, and you can see by rolling that corner how nice the edge that gives you on the on the tube itself or on the kit itself. Oh, beautiful! Very nice. And before the night's over, we'll assemble this one just to see. Do you want to really see nice me stuff. do the? Do you want to see me do the? the resin one that looks more waxy to see how it looks when it's done? Or do you want me to yeah. turn a wooden uh, let's, one? Let's do the shell casing. Okay. So I'm gonna do the, the shell plate. casing next. So now I gotta switch things over because now I'm gonna switch to a mandrel. This is the only time I use a mandrel. First step, take the powder out. <laughs> first step, first step, knock primer out. So you gotta yes. know somebody that either got to buy once fired cases or you have to find somebody that reloads rifle shells like myself. And I happen to load 308 and 30 at six. So you can use 308 or 30 at six cases. 30 at six are a little tougher because you got to drive the, the pen mechanism into the case a little ways. They can be a little more problematic because because your pen insert the actual pen part isn't long enough to the length of the case. So there's my drive center that I was just using. Yep. It's a it's sixty great. degree drive center. Um, somebody could put it. I got this off of Amazon. If somebody wants to put a link, to go ahead. I think I paid like 10 bucks for it, maybe. Yep, that's the price. So now, when I do these cases, I am going to switch to a mandrel saver. And I'll slide this ahead so you can see it.
This is my mandrel saver. Beats the, it saves a lot on your mandrels. It takes the pressure off the mandrel. It takes the side pressure, the end pressure off the mandrel. So now I'm gonna put that in my headstock. I'll adjust my camera just a little. You guys can see it a little better right there. Now I'm gonna push this up on this end. I have, I have a bushing that I've made out of an, one I've damaged that is exactly the same size as the butt end of that shell casing. You can put the shell casing on the lathe if you want to and use that as your, as your guide. But if you hit it with your tool, you're gonna to peel the brass and it's gonna look funny. So I just made my own bushing out of another bushing and I used one of my old carbide tools to make the bushing. Now, hopefully this doesn't blow up because I'm not sure. It says spalted, so I have no idea what this is. Spin it by hand. I'm going to turn my light back on so I can see my bushing. I'm still going to use the same carbide tools as I used before. Gonna make sure I'm on center with the tool. Don't have quite enough pressure. Can you hear that sound? Can you hear that hum? No, it's or, muffled. It's muffled? Muffling it. Okay, it sounds like a hum, like a motor hum. That's when you know you got enough pressure on the, on the mandrel. So you're pushing on the blank rather than on the mandrel. You're pushing this way towards the headstock with your tailstock. Gonna give it just a little more. And I do get nice curly shavings a little bit. Let's see there. I do get curly shavings. I don't know if you can see that when I'm turning, but I am getting curly shavings. And on the square cutter, I use the outside corners to rough with. And then I'll come back and use the center of the cutter to, to do the actual smoothing. So you can see you can use that like a parting tool too, or or a, a skew. You can use the tool like a skew. So on this end, I got to cut it down to a seven millimeter bushing. On this end, I'm not sure what it is. It's like three eighths of an inch. So I'm just tapering this now to make my taper.
see how smooth I got it. Oh, not too bad for whatever it is. Got a lot of cracks in it. So I got a lot of cracks in it. I'm going to stop there. I have some black CA glue. Find my activator. So I have some black Starbond. And I'm going to fill these cracks in with that Starbond. This has got, I don't know, it's like it's a burl. And it's got all kinds of cracks in it. I'm kind of surprised it didn't explode, actually. We're glad it didn't. Yeah, me too. They didn't make up an extra one of these. You're about out of face shields, too, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, I'm out of face shields, too. They'll be here on Saturday, though. Now I got... Did he freeze out or did I freeze out? Okay, there it is. Hey, Scott, you I need to shoot your lying. wife a... Uh, Scott, shoot your wife a message and tell her to get offline. She, she's actually not home. Oh, okay. She's, uh, she's actually... My wife teaches card classes. So she makes uh, greeting cards. So Wednesday is her greeting card class day. So this works out that great. Works out. For, for being on here. We're usually not on at the same time. And because I have this down so far and seen the cracks so close to the end, I'm just gonna sand them smooth, which normally I wouldn't do. But I'm almost down to the bushing on this end. And same thing on this end. So there, now it's ready for, I'll do my CA, I'll show you how I do my CA finish. It's ready there. I will uh, just touch it with some quick, with some 220 and a little 320, which I have some off to the side here already. Just to make sure I ain't got any big scratches in it. I don't know what this is, but it sure smells good. That was 220. I'll just touch it a little with a little 320. Pretty good. Now I need a clean piece of paper towel. I'm going to wipe this down with a little denatured alcohol. And I'm gonna come back with little 400 to knock the grain down because denatured alcohol will raise the grain slightly.
Okay, now I'm going to do my CA finish. I'm going to put some rubber gloves on. Make sure I grab the two bottles I need. So when I do CA finish, I start out with thin. Put a coat of thin on first. And I'll put coats of medium on until I get to wherever I want it to be, whatever sheen I want it to be, final sheen. So I'm just folding up some more of that paper towel again to make a buffing pad. And then I'm gonna use my curing agent rather than using the spray, spray cure, I'm gonna use boiled linseed oil as my curing agent for the CA glue. Now it's really warm in my shop right now. Normally I wouldn't have it, wouldn't be doing these at 70 degrees just because it, I don't like the smell of the CA glue that much. It steers off fast. So the first coat of the thin I put on by hand, spin the lathe by hand, keep the paper towel moving so it don't stick. There's your first coat. And that's dry. That flashed over already. So now I'm gonna put the cap back on my, and you can see there's a shine on there already just from the, from the thin. Now I'm gonna put, I cut my paper towel off. I'm gonna start with a fresh edge, couple drops, put it on. That's the medium. Now, right where I just put that drop of CA on this piece of paper towel, I'm gonna to put the boiled linseed oil on, right in the same spot. And now I'm gonna polish. And I polish till it burns the inside of my nose or makes my eyes water. Then I know the glue is flashed over. Normally I'd wear a mask, but you wouldn't be able to hear me. And I polish this till I feel the heat in my finger. When you feel the heat in your finger, you can stop. You can see in that piece of paper towel, there's a coating of plastic in that paper towel already. It's hard. It won't, it comes right back to its shape. Okay. Thought there was a spot on my camera. It's my black mouse showing up on my screen on my TV. Thought I put a piece of black CA glue on my camera screen. Tricked myself. Yeah. So now I put the first two coats on without it spinning. Now I'm going to put this next coat on with it spinning. Put the Put the linseed oil back on again, my flash over. And because it's so warm in my shop right now, this is flashing really fast. I'm gonna keep going until my finger gets warm. Don't stop this paper, whatever you do. You stop the paper, it's stuck to the blank and you'll get your sandpaper out and start over. But now it's hard again. I'll cut it off. And I keep track of these. I got a little bin on the side of my lathe where I 
keep some sandpaper and some other tools and I cut them off and put them in there so I know how many coats I put on. I'm gonna do the same procedure again. Burning my nose. There we go. There's the shine. So now I'll come back, put the cap back on my stuff so I don't spill CA glue all over or linseed oil. How am I doing on time, Dane? No, uh, you're fine. Okay. Now I don't micro mesh this. I go right straight to the car polish. I skip the micro mesh when I'm doing wood. And put that on. Smear it in. Make a mess. Looks like I had a little void in there. You can see I didn't quite get all the voids filled in right there. So if I can find my little brush again. I got another one in the drawer. Hands-free sketchers slip it. I just step. So that's the top, and I'll leave that void in there. I kind of like it that way. Personal preference, and that's all I do to the wood tops. So now that'll fit the bottom of that shell casing. I'm going to take this off. Now there's a good chance that that bushing on that end is stuck on there. Just take it out to the end and just give it a little pop. It should come off. Dropped one under the lathe. I don't want to lose that. So now this part is essentially done. And look at the shine on that with just a few coats of CA glue and a little car polish. So if you're using Parfex, just to really make your Parfex shine, I'd use this car polish on it. It would. It's probably going to heighten the gloss by 20, 30% at least, I would think. Maybe even as much as 50% just over leaving it by itself. But that's up to you guys. Very nice. Got So now we'll talk about how we make the shell casings because there's a little trick to that too. So these shell casings, this one already has a tube glued in it. So you take a seven millimeter If you want to do it in a drill press, you got to have a machinist vise in order to do that, which looks like. I missed all of that. Okay. So if you want to, you want to drill this, Brenda, you have to do it either grab it with your spigot jaws and put a juck on your lathe and put spigot jaws in it, 
and grab it as close to the end as you can, close to the this end. Okay. And drill that hole for your seven millimeter tube, okay? Okay. If you want to drill it on a drill press, you have to have one of these. Hold it up higher. On the bed waist. I'm going to set it right there. So this is a machinist vise. It has V grooves cut in it and a locking bar that goes on either side. So, so your shell casings are tapered. So you have to grab them as close as you can to the end that you're going to drill. So this end that you're going to drill, you have to grab it within the first quarter inch because that's the thickest part of the case and you won't crush it. And it's also the straightest part of the case. You can see on that case, the shine where it switches from, there's a little ring right here. Let me get these gloves off and I can show you a little better, maybe. Give a little something for a little pointer. So when you resize these cases, they don't resize all the way to the bottom. This part of the case is, is hollow from right there yep. to the back, from right for the tip of this tool to the back to the butt end. So it's hard doing this backwards. Looks like there's a end, ridge. Yep, there's a little ridge right here. This is solid. This is what you're drilling to get your, your tube in, okay? Now, you have to take some form of epoxy. Um, you could wrap tape around it. You could use regular one-minute epoxy. I use um, JB Weld on here because this, this case, the inside of that hole isn't seven millimeters. It's a little bigger. It's uh, 20 thousands bigger to be exact. So this, this flops around in here. So what I do to fix that problem is I put this on the lathe with some, so I let the epoxy harden, put this on the lathe and I just capture it between some bushings Put this all back together again on the mandrel. Can you move your camera up a little bit? Sure. Can you see? This is what we're looking at right here. Okay. okay. So we're going to turn that to fit in that hole so it's perfectly round. Or you Scott, could can sand you... it. Scott, rotate your. Go, your go ahead, Dean. Just, just to... rotate your camera up just here. It's we barely got it. There you go. Okay. Good. Okay, yep. now you can either sand this or you can turn this. I'm going to try turning it just because I'm brave today. <laughs> so you have a seven millimeter bushing right here that you can use as a guide. So you want to be a little bigger than that seven millimeter bushing. Then you got to get enough pressure on it to hold it you're only catching just the edge of that tube. This can be kind of a pain. I've wrapped tape around it. Tape works too, but this is a little easier. Huh. Turning. So JB, weld. <laughs> JB Weld machines real well. It stinks, it smells horrible, but it does machine pretty well. So now this is just a matter of trial and error. You just gotta keep, unless you wanna build a bushing, which I haven't done yet. I just lost the bushing, dropped it. So now I just keep machining this till that would fit inside of there, okay? I won't go through all those steps. I'll go through and show you what I do to the casing now that it's already to that point. We're going to pretend that I got that in there, that I've glued that tube in there. Take that off. Now I'm going to put this on here. Now you can see that it's not wobbling around. 
appears to be fairly straight. I'll put this all back together again. Now this is preference. Some people like them shiny. Some people like them antique looking, which is just the oil off your fingers can do that on the shell casings. If you want to polish them, I'll show you how to polish them. I got a question real quick, Scott. Go ahead. How far down does that JB weld go now in that bullet casing? It's going to go down the length of this neck. Okay. 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 That's all the farther it goes because that case is hollow inside. And you're just trying to get it so that it fits into this neck. So okay. you only got to, you only need about a quarter inch of material. If you have more than that, that's fine because this part of the neck is bigger. Gotcha. I worry about the first quarter inch. Okay. So if I set this up here, you can see how much how much you got to worry about. Gotcha. Okay. Hmm. So now I have a piece of three thousand grit wet dry sandpaper. I'm just going to dip this in the water so it's water polishing. And I'm just going to polish this case. Don't use this sandpaper for anything else after you polish metal with it. You'll get black streaks in whatever you're dealing with. So now you got a polished case. Now, if you want to keep it shiny, you can put CA glue on it or you can wax it and then eventually it'll just tarnish again from the oils on your hands. It'll stay shiny for quite a while. I don't like them shiny. I like them to look like they do when you've, I mean, when you buy them in the store, this is the way they look. I mean, they, they're not shiny normally. Um, you can buy, if I can find them in my mess, and you can buy these online at a, any uh, online sporting goods store that handles reloading equipment. You can also buy them in Chrome. And then you don't have to do any polishing. They already come chrome plated mm. or nickel plated. Some companies use nickel, some people use some companies use chrome. So it's the same brass shell. It works like brass, it's just got a chrome finish on it. So now I'll assemble this one. And you, you guys can have a couple choices. Let me get this off of here. And I'm bound and determined to lose that bushing. Now that seven millimeter tube goes from one end to the other, right? Yep. So so you're good. Yep. So a standard slimline pen cord. blank. Yep. I felt it. <laughs> a standard slimline pen kit works in these shell casings, okay? That's what I use as a standard slimline two-piece pen kit. Okay. Knock this out of the way so we can see. I don't have to move the camera. So now, if you look in my little fancy box, you can buy them in copper. You can get them in copper. Or you can get them in black. Now, some rifle bullets come coated black. I like the black look. So if you want to do copper or black, just let me know which one you want to do. Which would you like to see, copper or black? Black. Okay. Black. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this black. tube. You're getting black. <laughs> so now I'm going to swing you over here. This is my homemade pen press that I've made myself. 
I've made probably 10 or 15 of these. So now you're just going to press this in here, just like you would build a regular pen. Mm -hmm. A little spacer block in here so it bottoms out. Hmm. There you go. Now the bottom's done for that part. Now you're going to take your transmission. I always make sure that the transmission screwed all the way <laughs> closed. Otherwise, you can. Uh, wreck these transmissions when you press them together. That one's locked. <laughs> that one you can see is screwed down. Can you see that? <clears throat> see how it's screwed down inside there? Yep. So that pen, that transmission is considered open. So the, the nib would be sticking, the pen point would be sticking through the nib. You want to press these in when it's closed like that. <laughs> that keeps you from crushing the, the the transmission when you put it in the pen press. Hmm. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Too many things in my way here. Where I spill this. Slide this out of my way. My pen press, you notice the handle comes off, so it can be stored in a toolbox. Now you're just going to press this in here, and sometimes they go in really hard. Like this one. And then they slip and go way too far in. Nope, they break like this one just did. Oh, no. Not a big deal. I've taken these apart so many times. And the nice part about this one is it didn't get in all the way. So now that one broke off where I can't get it out. I'm just going to take a drill bit and drill it out at some point. But I'll make one of these other ones that isn't polished. And so I like the unpolished ones. This one has a little bit of shine on the end because it was, when I ran it through the die, it got a little shiny. That one's together. Let's see if we have any luck on this one. Biggest thing is getting them to push straight. That's what keeps you from bending them. That one's going to go in. Yeah. So there's a line on that transmission. And you go just to the end of the line. And it just so happens I have a pen kit out here. And there you go. So I'll put together, what do I do with the top now? So the top end, you can do whatever you want. I have chrome ones, I have black ones. I'm just gonna make this one chrome to match the black to match the bottom.
And I gotta get a little more spacer. So, everybody's got scraps of wood laying around for a spacer. Have to screw out here. There you go. Finished rifle shell pen. Wow. Good job, Scott. Absolutely great. Nice, Scott. Nice. They, they, too. They, they look really good with the antler, too. Yes. I do make some with antler on the end, too. So. <laughs> I'll just finish this other one for you quick while we're talking. So this is a Sierra kit. The only piece you have to press on a Sierra kit is the top section. Turn you back around over here. Find my rest of my components. So this is a Sierra pen kit. Comes with a transmission and the this and a spring, don't lose the spring. Because they never put the spring in a little bag. After in there, screw this together. Make sure it's good and tight. push your end on. Now you have a competed. So all I did was screwed that transmission in there. Screwed this in to the bottom section. You push the top on and now you have a Sierra pen. Now, good. Thanks. when you sell these, if you buy good Sierra pens, you notice there's a little wax ball on the end. Mm -hmm. Remind remind the customer to pull that off or they'll be calling you on the phone saying my pen don't work. <laughs> and all it is is they didn't take the little rubber protective ball off. These are roller balls and they're gel pens. Yeah. So, so in order to keep them from drying out till you sell them, you got to leave that little rubber rubber ball on there. Yes, which means they cannot test the pen beforehand. So the store that I sell in, the lady is nice enough that she actually bought a pen from me and she leaves it sitting by the display for the people to try how it writes. Yeah. And then once a month, I send her a new, new ink cartridge because that's cheap advertisement. Great. And I get, for a, for a pen like this, I get... Um, between $40 and $60, depending on which community I'm, I got the sale in. Fantastic. In the, nice. In the Monaco area up north, where it's very touristy here in Wisconsin, these go for $60. Bucks. Wow. That's that's is, triple is what that, I got in the. Is that that's the triple what I got in it. What was that, Sue? But is that the elegant Sierra? Yes, it is. Okay. And this is... Um, chrome satin chrome chrome they make it this way and then they make it just the opposite where this is chrome and this is satin i like the way that is that's really nice and they also make an entry questions all made sense to me okay Good, variable de demonstration tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, oh, 
what one more thing I want to show Eddie. So when you put these, when you get these pens and you trim the barrels, they sometimes it leaves a, bur a burr inside that barrel. You can mm -hmm. buy a tool like this that's a deburring tool. You stick it in here, go around a couple times, and you can see how shiny that is. Yeah. And get it to there and get it to focus. See how the shine it took that burr off of there. That'll help you also in your assembly process on seven millimeter pen kits on slimline kits. Mm -hmm. You can get a nice, nice chamfer in there. When you go to put the pens together, you'll have a lot less breakage. Okay. Just, just a little tip. Is that tool very burned. expensive? Um, you get a three pack. So there's one for doing brass. There's one for doing plastic. And there's one for doing steel. And I think they're like, don't quote me, but they're somewhere between 10 and 15 bucks for three of them. Okay. And what I've you, seen them. I've seen what, them at Lowe's. I've seen them at Home Depot. Really? Um, if you have a Menards, they have them. I've seen them at Menards. Um, <laughs> and I think even our favorite place, Harbor Freight, carries them, I think. That's where I got mine. This this is this one's made by General, so it's a pretty good one. Hmm. I I think I got these at Ace Hardware actually because they're General. Ace Hardware here sells General tools, hand tools, hmm. and they're on a swivel so they spin. Okay. You get it where you can see it. They do spin. But I just, Scott, I just go ahead, Eddie. Scott, that was a great demo. We got some folks waiting to show us gallery, and we got a sure we. Uh, not to rush you off, but don't want to nope. miss much tonight. No, I didn't want to run this long, but apparently I had good stuff to show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. ran yes, great. Did. Very nice. Great demo. Great demo, Thank Scott. Thank you very much, Scott. Yes, Scott. Thank you. I, I hope I answered Joaquin's question on what you can do with carbide negative rate because he was asking, I don't know, a week or two ago. So hopefully he was watching so he could see what we did. <laughs> 